There's something so special about Bali. It's more than a place. It's a mood, a healing, quintessential tropical state of mind. I bring students to the island of the gods almost every year to experience the rich and diverse culture of Bali, from the exquisite flower petal offerings placed everywhere in gratitude to the spirits, to the otherworldly traditional music and daily ceremonies performed island-wide. Almost everything has a spiritual meaning and creativity and art is an integral part of life. Bali has many moods and this year my retreat groups experienced a more laid-back village by the sea feel in beautiful Balian beach. And this was the inspiration for this lesson. So I gathered my photos, my images that I had taken, and I wanted to take elements from several different photos to create a sketch um, in a more kind of illustrative way. So I began with three photos. One was a drive-by photo that I took on the way to the Elephant Park and um, I captured a woman, a Balinese woman, uh, actually bringing out the gratitude offering to the spirits at her beautiful doorway. And speaking of doorways, I took so many photos of doorways in Bali as well. And uh, so many beautiful ones. And the, the photo that you see in this lesson with that gorgeous turquoise door and the magenta bougainvillea uh, was also the main inspiration for this sketch. And then one morning, on a very early morning walk, I came across this handsome rooster who was actually having a little breakfast out of the gratitude offering, out of the spirit offering. So I took those three elements, the doorway, the rooster, and the Balinese woman with her offering, and I set out to create a sketch incorporating all of those. So you can see here that I'm working from the little sketch that I created, but I'm working very loosely with a piece of willow charcoal. And I want to create a, a loose sketch. So I'm just looking at the elements of what I've laid down on my pencil sketch. And I'm looking at how all of the lines and the shapes Kind of come together but I don't want to get too rigid I don't want to get too caught up with detail so I'm holding the willow charcoal right at the end and that gives me a very free and loose expressive line I'm not worried about mistakes uh, because there are no mistakes in this process. I'm just trying to get down these elements in a way that's pleasing. And, and I'm not even completely sticking to the sketch at this point. Um, I want this piece to evolve organically. And as I said, I don't want it to be tight. I don't want it to have too many details. So I'm just kind of choosing the elements that I place in. I'm thinking now about some of the foreground elements and bringing in some of those larger leaves and the importance of having a foreground and a middle ground and a background is to give the eye a way to enter the scene. So we're giving ourselves a sense of perspective uh, even though this is a more illustrative piece rather than a realistic piece, but having those larger uh, areas of foliage towards the front gives us a sense of looking through, looking into a scene. And moving into some of the background area and bringing in that large tree that is going to be set back in the piece. 
and then coming again just moving my way around coming into the foreground adding more details and I'm beginning to strengthen up some of the lines so rather than have the uh, strength of the charcoal be the same all the way around the drawing the sketch I'm beginning to be a little more bold with some elements and now bringing in a charcoal pencil just for a slightly different line just to mix it up a little bit and adding in more elements of the foliage in the foreground and the background but feeling my way around again I, I'm, I don't want to make it too busy I'm mindful of the negative spaces which are the the shapes that are left behind or in between um, the elements within the drawing so the spaces in between trees the negative space of the sky the space in between the leaves in the foreground the negative shape of the pathway that leads up to the door. These are all equally important parts of the drawing as are the positive shapes. Using my finger I blend a few of the charcoal lines and just to give us a sense of uh, contrast between the stronger line work and the more smudgy areas. Then I'm coming in with a one inch wide flat wash brush, one of my favorite brushes, just a little bit of water on it and Again, just bringing some diversity to the line by actually adding water to some of those strong lines and getting a little bit of uh, tonal uh, work happening as well. One of the main things I'm always looking for in my work, whether I'm working with abstraction or whether I'm actually trying to create an image, is um, I'm, I'm looking for contrast. I'm looking for diversity and ways to, to add contrast to the work, whether it's in contrast of darks and lights, whether it's in the application of brushwork or the strength of line or the difference in the way that we can actually place lines into the sketch. Always just trying to mix it up and have a balance of different elements. Now it's time to add in some colour and I come in with that beautiful pop of teal in the Amsterdam ink range and that was the closest that I had with me to match the beautiful colour of the doors. So just a few drops of ink and then taking a damp brush and just moving that ink around the doorway but again trying to stay loose and I'm allowing for the charcoal to mix with the teal so we're not going to fight that we're going to use that as a part of the imagery and that will give us some tonal variations within the color of the door So 
you can see I'm using short, sharp strokes, just dabbing at the ink and I'm not pushing too hard. I'm not going over and over the same area again because what happens when you do that is you lose the variation that you have uh, in, the, in the ink uh, application and everything starts to look overworked and starts to look same same. They're coming up into those palm trees, moving that teal around. So even though the trees aren't teal, I want to move the color around the image so that it's balanced. Just bringing that teal into a third place where I intuitively feel that it works best. Time for another pop of colour with a beautiful magenta. You can see that a little bit goes a long way with these inks. And if you apply too much ink, uh, you might want to have your paper towel handy to actually dab back some of the excess because you'll get a nicer feel of transparency with less rather than more. You can see where the magenta is mixing with the charcoal that you're getting some beautiful variations in tone and some lovely deeper purples. And all of these colours are, are actually everywhere in Bali. It's a kaleidoscope of tropical, luscious colour. Everywhere you look from the foliage to the houses and the doorways, and the fabrics, it's just the most beautiful, beautiful um, rainbow. So while I have that magenta on my brush, I'm bringing it around to a few other areas and even beginning to layer a little bit over the teal of the door. So bringing in colors one by one and just assessing as I'm laying them down how they're working with each other. So now I'm coming in with the flame orange, which is really gonna pop next to that blue. So you can see I'm, I'm not being faithful to all of the colors in the photo imagery, but I'm using my creative license a little bit to you know, feel out what works with what. And these inks are just so gorgeous and they're wonderful to work with in layers and glazes as well. So if you do lay down a color and then later on you feel like it's just not working for you, you can let it dry and bring another color over the top and shift um, the hue. So coming in and just laying down a background color of that frame around the door. And once again, keeping very loose. And moving that flame orange around, allowing it to blend with the charcoal.
We're not looking for details. We're not looking for a facial um, expression or even any kind of facial features. We're just looking to get the feel and the gist of the scene and the, the feeling and vibrance of the Balinese culture. And I know that my lines are wonky, that the frame or the building around the doorway is not in scale, nor is the rooster on top, but these things aren't bothering me. I'm looking for a fun and quirky uh, way of depicting this scene. Coming in with a deep green from the De La Rani range. Not a color I use very often, and it, it's not one of my go-tos really, but I'm just looking to get in some of the deeper areas of the Bougainvillea before I come in with the magenta flowers. Moving that green around, trying it out in different places. Beginning to overlap areas of foliage. And being really aware that I'm at the stage of the painting where it's looking kind of a bit messy or it's, you know, it's the, the bones are building but it's definitely not there yet. And I just wanted to say to you guys that, you know, this is, is the point where a lot of times students become discouraged or give up because they start to judge their work before it's even anywhere near finished. Uh, so it's kind of like, you know, making a beautiful meal and tasting it when it's half cooked or you've only got half of the ingredients in and then throwing it down the sink because you think that it's a failure. You know, we can't be attached to the work in progress and judge it as if it's a completed piece. You have to be okay with it going through different incarnations and some of them being uh, ugly incarnations uh, or parts you know that aren't working and you just keep on moving through so remembering that sometimes you'll need to dab back if you've been too heavy-handed with the ink at this point I've laid in uh, some blue for the sky and also a deeper blue for the fence next to the orange door frame And all the while I'm just, you know, again, assessing how are these colors working together? Do I like that deeper color? Will I bring something else in over the top of it? How are the elements working together? What does it need? So after reflecting on the balance of colors, I decide that I want to bring in some opaque. Uh, so I'm coming in with some, uh, some whole bean acrylic gouache in a light turquoise. And I'm pushing back some of that green foliage at the top. Just using my finger again just to stay loose and bringing that color around, taking it for a little walk around the image. So beginning to play with opaque paint against those more transparent inks. And again, this is a way to add contrast.
Using my fingers as a paintbrush and a blending tool is often a tactic that I will come back to when I feel like that I've begun to get a little loose. So my intention with this painting was definitely for it to be fun, whimsical, loose, illustrative, without being too detailed or rigid. And so I'm at that point where I felt like the energy was moving more towards me getting finicky with it and um, you know each individual element wanting to be uh, kind of drawn in more detail and so what I'm doing coming in with my fingers and with some white ink is I'm freeing up again I'm wanting to get more of a sense of playfulness back and to get less of a feeling of restriction within my own energy and to just allow some things to happen. So bringing in the white ink in this way is kind of a bold move, uh, but it will take me to a new, fresher place, I hope. So moving, you can see I'm using that large, wide brush again. And this is another tool that I use in order to not get too caught up with detail. You can see I'm going over some of the elements, but I can always bring them back again. I decide that that deeper purple is not working for me, so I push it back with the white. So after bringing in that white in an attempt to loosen things up again, to be honest, I was really feeling like, oh, where shall I go now? I'm not sure what to do. So sometimes you need to step away from the piece and let it dry. Go and grab a drink of water or make yourself a cup of tea, then come back and look at it with fresh eyes. So when I come back and the ink is dry, I pick up my willow charcoal again and begin to bring back some of the details. Once again, staying nice and loose, not adding everything in that I see, keeping my lines a little wonky, uh, making sure that some lines are stronger than others. and just moving around the image and sketching back in some of those charcoal lines. So not every single line, working in kind of a hit and miss way, just giving a little bit of definition here and there, but not everywhere. So at this point, with the green foliage of the Bougainvillea dry, I come in with the magenta.
I'm just using small twisting dabs to describe those beautiful flowers. magenta is placed in ways around the picture that feels balanced. I'm doing this with each color that I use. Adding a little white acrylic gouache to the umbrellas and it's blending quite nicely with the orange ink that's still slightly wet and giving us just a little bit of uh, definition, a little bit of a sense of light. Scratching through with the end of the brush bringing a little bit more detail in for those hanging tassels. Strengthening up some of the lines of the foliage over on the left that were lost when I brought the white over the top. And coming in with another application of teal into some areas of the door. So you can see it's a real push and pull when you're painting in this way. So I want to mix up the greens a little bit and so I bring in a little bit of light green, mix it with some yellow and some white so that I can have some different uh, tonal variations and I'm playing around with bringing a little line work into some of that foreground foliage. And you'll notice that even when I change the color completely of a particular element, um, as in those uh, leaves in the front, that I always leave some evidence of the underlayers. And this helps to give more depth and variety to the piece as well.
So bringing those greens around the painting in various strengths and applications, filling in some of those negative shapes with some smaller details, different kinds of plants and vegetation. Still not completely happy with those large leaves in the foreground, so I try something else. And sometimes it might take, you know, six different applications to actually get to a point where you're happy with a particular element. Coming in with a little bit more white ink and once again being very free with the application uh, on the rooster and a little bit more white in the sky and oftentimes towards the end of a painting I like to push the contrast between darks and lights so that's what I'm doing here is just lightening that sky and little bits of the sky in between the bougainvillea. Adding a few more highlights in several areas. And then coming in with a vibrant pop of pink with the fluorescent pink in the Dale Rowney acrylic ink range. You don't want to go too overboard with any of the fluorescent colors as they do tend to uh, compete with the other colors and they will kind of draw the eye in and not allow the viewer's eye to move around the piece in the way that it should. So just a, a small amount of fluoro if you're going to play with that. Coming in just with a regular lead pencil and adding in some drawn details in a few areas. And now playing with a white gel pen, my favorite Signo Uniball white gel pen. And again, feeling my way around to see where can I add some details and highlights without going too far overboard.
You can see how, how these small elements towards the end of a painting can really start to make the piece feel more cohesive and really start to bring it all together. And using my willow charcoal once again to come in and strengthen and give more definition to some lines, uh, especially some of these uh, ones in the foreground, just a little bit more depth there. And just getting towards uh, small marks and assessing uh, these last small details. And really quite happy with the piece although there were lots of moments where I felt like it wasn't coming together or I wasn't sure what direction to take. I pushed through and I'm really pleased with where it's at and where we've finished and I hope that you've enjoyed the lesson and I hope that you're, you're pleased with your piece and how it's turned out as well and that this has helped you to uh, realize that you can bring together different elements from different images to create something completely new and fresh. So in the next lesson, we're going to take this in a different direction, a more abstract one.